As you think about the coolest part of the day, those summer nights spent in the backyard, they can be dreamy, they can be magical. Not as magical if you feel like the neighbors are peeping in to see what all the fun is about. If you're looking for ways to add more privacy to your yard, we're here to help. From walls to bushes, trees, even vines, my next guest says there are so many creative ways to create a space that feels tucked away from it all. Landscape consultant Cynthia B with Utah Waterways is here with advice. Always great to see you, sister. It's always fun to come. Is this a big concern? Do you hear this question a lot? Oh yeah, you know, as our lots are shrinking in size, yes. privacy is becoming more and more of an issue. I mean, the reason most people wanted a big yard was literally separation from neighbors. Mm. But physical space isn't the only way to create that separation. There's other tools that we can use. And you say before we think about what we need, we need to understand the actual problem. Yeah, so sometimes the problem you're trying to solve is that you want to literally screen out your windows from the neighbor. Sometimes it's that you're just trying to create separation between spaces, not necessarily full privacy. Or maybe, you know, you've got road noise or other things that you just want to kind of get some plant density there to bring that down. So really hone in on what aspect of privacy appeals yes. to you. So yeah, so if you're just trying to create separation, that's usually in the front yard, right? So yeah. a park strip flip, yeah, awesome way to do that. Um, you, because you're you're creating that distance between the sidewalk and the street, yeah. but not enough to hide people, just right. enough, and we're and we're taking out lawn that doesn't really serve a purpose anyway. Um, or even in the front yard, you know, one of the most underutilized things, front yard seating, but you don't want to be on display necessarily. <laughs> so creating some of that low, beautiful, you know, foliage that kind of creates a little separation, but gives people a peek. Yeah. That's you don't have to host thing. a reverse parade and wave at everybody. That's right, that's inside. right. I mean, I guess you could. Well, let's start with solutions to create that separation that you talked about. You, yeah. bet you touched on a couple. Um, flipping the park strip in particular, how can that, elaborate on how that can provide more privacy. Well, but right now, when you've got just a, a lawn park strip, it's just flat between there and the street. So let's say someone's kicking a ball in the front yard, it yeah. goes right out into the street. Whereas yeah. if you have plants and things there, you have a little bit of a buffer that separates you from the street and, and creates that visual. And a fence is kind of the default. You like a fence yes. with plants. If you're going to do a fence in the front yard, first off, you're limited on how high it can be, but bring it back. Don't put it right on the property line. Um, not only is that unfriendly, but it also opens it up to damage and so it makes it hard for pedestrians. Bring it back a couple feet. You're talking a fence running adjacent to the home. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, if you're going to okay. do a front yard fence, so bring it back a few feet, put some plants in front of it, and then you're still getting that screening, but you're not making it unfriendly. Got it, got it. It's still cozy, it still looks touchable, livable. If we want to take it a step further and block views, tall trees, I think another app, yes. natural kind of default thought those take a long time to grow right so if you're trying to screen a, a, a two-story house behind you then yes tall trees but 20 years right so one of the easier ways to do that is in your foundation plantings closer to your home mm -hmm. go with some taller shrubs or or even some columnar evergreens closer to the home closer to your house okay. that will screen your window so I personally back face to a really busy street uh -huh. and so I've got a really deep planting bed across the back that just now I planted it in 2007. Are my trees really providing a lot of screening? Yeah. But closer to the house, I put in shrubs and trees to do that very thing. And I've been in. having privacy there for a decade. To close it in. You point out a perfectly straight row of hedges can run into some issues though in the hot summer. Okay, so what everybody imagines is that we're gonna have this clipped hedge that's all Boxwoods. gorgeous. Yes, yeah. boxwoods that dry out. Like broadleaf, evergre or broadleaf evergreen shrubs like that just do not handle days like this they in Utah hold. and that's why you see they get like weird foliage and whatnot that it's our winter winds that just suck the life out of them mm. so there's not a lot of plants that can really handle Utah so we think of it and we're looking at examples from Washington right and places where that works yeah this is or Utah. lush and green we're and gonna have missing tooth syndrome <laughs> things are gonna die <laughs> okay. like nothing invites plant death like a hedge of the exact same thing planted at the exact same height and yeah. so instead we want to mix it up a little so we have lots of different plants I brought today that are columnar hedging shrubs. Okay. So they're still narrow, but they're going to give you some of that height and they're going to do it quickly. Can you call out a few of these varieties? Yeah. So these two right in front here are both um, buckthorns. One's a fine line and one's a, just a regular buckthorn. And they will get to like 10, 12 feet tall in three years. Oh, wow. And, um, but they're only going to get a foot and a half wide. Yeah. The key when you're doing that though, is to also think about the base. So they also have what I call uh, naked ankles. If you look at the bottom <laughs> of the shrub where it's not so attractive. Missing teeth, naked ankles. That's right. That's apart. right. Right. Okay. So, so just make sure you leave enough space to put some plants down in front 
that can hide the naked ankles, okay. and you're fine. So we want to have <laughs> layers of plantings, but you can see that whole layered planting still only needs about three feet of space. And that looks so lovely. So don't just think height, think depth. That's really smart. Right. Um, let's transition to structured screening, which oh, can offer so even more examples. privacy. Yes. So, okay. So if you want to create kind of, you know, it, you can do that with vines and posts. Mm. So recent example, which we showed here with that beautiful X espalier look, yes. that is uh, from the Hidden Gardens tour. Thank beautiful. you. Creative Utahns that yes. put your yards on display for the rest of us. Um, but that's just very simple with the wires and the posts. And you just bring that between and grow those up. Um, I have two different examples. One where they kind of made it more of a formal X you know, shape, uh -huh. and then the other one, they just let the, the vine go crazy and covered the entire structure. So that second example is in Grantsville, and literally you walk in there, and it's the middle of the day, and they have to have lights so you can see because there's so much coverage that's been it's created by so those enclosed. vines. Are there any um, rules or regulations around that? Yeah, so the key here is that you, Almost every city requires no more than six foot tall fencing. Mm. You can't go taller than that on your property line. Okay. But once you come in the required setback, which is one to three feet, depending on your city, mm -hmm. that's where you can go up. So now I can go 12 feet tall if I'm off that property line. So that's the key and just make sure you do that correctly so that, you know, you can't be made to change it. And I love that you point out, I mean, sometimes I see these and you can tell it's an idea kind of gone askew in the sense that it looks like it's floating. You know what I mean? We've talked about the, mm -hmm. that before, landscape mm -hmm. installations that just seem to float. How do we prevent our, our privacy screens or our walls or our shrub walls from doing that? So we want to anchor them with, with like seating areas and things like that in front of them. So, you know, most of us in Utah, we have too much lawn. We all know we can't have that much going forward. So this is a great example of how we can utilize these things to still solve the same problems and provide the things that we need, but in a way that's just going to function much better in this climate. So, so those types of screens and seating, where you really need that is where you're sitting down and, and meeting yeah. up with your family, right? So, so applying those in that way and then that hardscaping really kind of anchors. Got it. Got it, Cynthia, you're so good. Thank, Thank you for you. taking your brain, putting it into words so we can visualize these beautiful options in Thanks our own backyards. Me. Where can we get more landscaping advice from you? So Utah's landscape style is called Localscapes and you can go to localscapes.com and we have a whole slate of teachers that can teach you how to get it. Teachers and portfolios you can peruse, so make sure that's a go-to resource for you as you're planning and evolving your yard this summer season and beyond. We'll link you from our website.